This is Mr. Beast 100 million subscriber play button, and in this video, I'm gonna try and send it into space. And Mr. Beast has no idea. Hopefully, I don't break it. Okay, I found a company that I think will be able to help. They've worked with YouTubers like Nico Amalana and Logan Paul. They've helped them send stuff into space using special high altitude balloons. So I'm gonna give them a ring and arrange a meeting. A couple of days later, I headed down to the Sense into Space office so I could discuss my plan with the team and I explained the opportunity Mr. Beast had given me. He's told me I can do whatever I want. So I want to send it into space. The team told me in 2018 they'd helped another YouTuber send a silver award into space. But a 100 million award is a lot heavier and therefore a lot more difficult. At this point, Mr. Beast's 100 mil award was still on the other side of the world, safely in his studio. But because the guys would need to know the award's exact dimensions and weights before they could confirm if this mission was even possible, I'd brought a backup. Fortunately for you guys, I do just have many 100 million subscriber play buttons just lying about. So, this is PewDiePie's. <laughs> we passed PewDiePie's award around and everyone was very worried about how heavy it was. Oh my god. And also, they had no idea how to safely attach it to the balloon without damaging anything. I've never been so excited and nervous at the same time. Now, you've got to remember that Mr. Beast is only letting me borrow his award for a couple of days. But it takes weeks to build the infrastructure and technology required to safely carry something thousands of miles into the air. So if PewDiePie's 100 million play button, manufactured and unboxed in 2019, isn't exactly the same weight and size as Mr. Beast's 100 million award, manufactured three years later, then this mission would fail. I left PewDiePie's award with the team so they could start planning how on earth they would secure the award. Meanwhile, I've come up with a genius idea to confirm the 200 million play buttons are the same size. I've secretly messaged Mr. Beast's friend Chandler and I've asked him to weigh the award without telling Jimmy. If he gets back to me and it weighs basically the same as PewDiePie's, we're good to go. While I was waiting for Chandler to reply, sent into space had designed and started to manufacture a carbon fiber shell that would surround the award along with windows on both sides so that you could still see it without risking anything getting scratched or broken. Chandler's just got back to me. He he says, I got you, bro. Thanks, Chandler. He says it's 18.5 pounds, but then he's also sent a cute little video of all of the awards propped up together. That's nice, isn't it? Thanks, Chandler. But yes, 18.5 pounds is basically the same measurement that I got on PewDiePie's award, so I guess that means we're good to go. This was great news for the project. However, I was then told that because this award is so close to the legal weight limit, we would need a 30-foot wide balloon in order to lift it into the air. And unsurprisingly, any kind of wind makes handling a 30-foot balloon very difficult. So naturally, we concluded the best thing for us to do was to rent out a literal aircraft hangar so that we could blow up the balloon indoors and then kind of just shove it out the door when it's ready to go. Apparently, there's a hangar in Wales which is available. No, I've never actually rented out a 200 foot Welsh aircraft hangar for a video before, but that should be fine, providing no huge global events get in the way. A few moments ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of Her Majesty. Queen Elizabeth II. You might be thinking, Jack, what does the Queen dying have to do with you sending Mr. Beast's play button into space? Well, there's lots of important country leaders flying to the UK to pay their respects. And this has caused all other aviation related stuff to be delayed by two weeks, which is a bit of a nightmare for me because tomorrow I'm traveling to London to pick up Mr. Beast's 100 million play button and I've only got it for two days. I begged the Mr. Beast team to let me borrow the award for longer, and they reluctantly agreed. The award was now on its way to me, so I got a train to London to go pick it up. It was handed to me by one of Jimmy's associates named Franklin. That is so heavy. Yeah. So I shoved it in my bag, and I got the hell out of there. Go, 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 go. We've got it, we've got it. Okay, I finally have Mr. Beast's 100 million play button, and we can finally confirm that it is the same size as PewDiePie's 100 million play button. So in 11 days time, I'll be traveling to Wales, and I'll be sending this thing into space. Hopefully nothing else goes wrong. One of the strongest September hurricanes to strike the US in decades. Now you might be thinking, Jack, what does a terrible hurricane in Florida have to do with you attaching a play button to a balloon in Wales? Well, the aftermath of Hurricane Ian is making its way across the Atlantic Ocean. And although the UK isn't facing anywhere near as terrible conditions as Florida, it is still making the United Kingdom very windy. And during my initial meeting with the space people, they told me they normally aim for wind speeds of about five miles per hour. Currently, for the day we're set to launch, the projected is 40 miles per hour. Okay, and I'm already getting messages from Mr. Beast's team asking if they can take the award back before they leave London. I had an emergency meeting with project leader Dr. Chris as they'd been analysing all projected flight paths during the storm and he gave me some very stressful news. We've probably got one day to make this happen. Right. One day. One day to pull this off. Oh my god. Normally, with these kind of aviation-based projects, you like to leave about a week free, so that if you get there and it's a bit windy, you're like, we'll just try again tomorrow. But for us, due to tropical storms, Mr. Beast needing his award back, and the longest reigning monarch literally dying, we have one day to pull this off. One day! So we set off to our aircraft hangar in Wales. The closer we got, the worse the weather seemed to be. Hello! We are in Wales now! The storm is worsening every second! Into space! 
So while Mr. Beast was giving away private jets to British YouTubers, I was making friends with Welsh locals and having a mental crisis in a caravan. This video has gotten way out of hand. So tomorrow at 4.30 a.m., Becky and I will be driving one and a half hours to the aircraft hangar. <laughs> because 7 a.m. is when the wind is at its calmest. It's still at 25 miles an hour. That is more than double the normal limit for which the send into space people send stuff into space. But because Mr. Beast needs his 100 million play button back, we're just sending it up anyway and hoping for the best. I can't believe we're sending it into space during the aftermath of a hurricane. <laughs> and Mr. Beast doesn't even know about it. Would he have said no if I told him this is what I want to do? Sent into space, had everything ready, and we're also on their way to Wales, keeping a close eye on weather projections. So all I could do now was sleep. All right, alarm is set for 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. Good night, everyone. Good morning, sleepyheads. It was still the middle of the night, but we had begun our journey. It is 5 a.m. We have about an hour left of our journey before we get to the Aerospace Center, and then it is time to finally send this play button into the stratosphere. Arriving at the hangar was very surreal. I'd never made a video of this scale before. Oh my god, as if this is for us. As we pulled in with the rest of the team, I was nervous of what could go wrong. As I sipped my tea, I visualized myself having to message the biggest YouTuber on the planet to inform him I'd broken the priceless possession he trusted me with. But the Red Diamond Award was now fully secured within its rig, ready to embark on a trip most humans will never get to experience. As the sun rose from behind the Snowdonian Mountains, the team started getting the balloon ready to be inflated. Fingers crossed it doesn't just immediately collide with that Peugeot, for example. Is that a Peugeot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the balloon was slowly filled with hydrogen. All I could do now was stand back and watch as this giant upside down singular scrotum type thing materialized in front of me. 30 minutes later, everything was ready. Due to the strength of the wind and the scale of the balloon, it would take six of us to safely maneuver outside. I was full of nerves as we began our final march. I had the most important job, which was to hold on to the very tip of the balloon. And by that, I mean I pointlessly held on to the end of a balloon that two other physically stronger and more qualified people were already holding securely so that I looked like I was doing something useful. But that didn't matter. Because this was our moment. Three months of calculating logistics, physical engineering, global travels, overcoming obstacles that no one would have ever expected. It had all come down to this. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one. Oh my god. The initial launch was a success. This calls for manly fist bumps all round. There it goes. What's it doing up there? <laughs> Within seconds, the award was already hundreds of meters into the air. Misty Welsh coastline reflected back into the play button while nothing more than a white speck could be seen from ground level. But this mission was far from over. The award wasn't just traveling upwards. The harsh winds were pushing it east at great speeds. If nothing goes wrong, our weather projections predicted it would arrive 116 miles away in a couple of hours. It would be impossible for Becky and I to get there in time for the landing, so we had a dedicated recovery team already on their way, tracking the award's precise location as they traveled. Now 15,000 feet into the air, we emerge above the clouds, a place where miserable UK weather no longer matters. The unobstructed sun shines onto the back of our crystal for the first time. Meanwhile, seems like the lads have it covered, so Becky and I decide to head back to our caravan. Hey guys, just leaving my aircraft hangar. No big deal. Mr. Beast's play button's currently heading into the stratosphere to reach a max altitude of about 31,000 kilometers. Am I allowed to drive here? Am I on a runway? Is there a plane about to, like, run us over? How do we leave? <laughs> The award continues to rise. As we exceed the height of Mount Everest, we officially leave the troposphere at an altitude of 32,000 feet. The sudden drop in temperature temporarily causes condensation to appear on the lens. The sky begins to darken and the curvature of the Earth becomes visible. The recovery team begin to close in on a projected landing location and I begin to close in on a McDonald's hash brown. Meanwhile, 100,000 feet away, Mr. Beast's award is now fully submerged in the Earth's stratosphere. Finally, we reach the boundaries of space. And then, just as I get Jimmy a new desktop wallpaper, at a peak altitude of 112,532 feet, the weather balloon bursts. 
This priceless award begins hurtling towards Earth at a peak descent speed of 178 miles per hour. The recovery team race to the landing zone as fast as they can. Meanwhile, I celebrate a hard day's work with an Egg McMuffin. Due to technical restrictions, the full descent was not recorded by the on-flight camera. But once the award was back in our atmosphere, the parachute opened and it floated safely down at about 8 miles per hour, landing right here outside of Stoke-on-Trent. The award had been successfully retrieved! This calls for some well-executed high fives! This remarkable journey was over. The award was left covered in frost. But... The question is, did I send Mr. Beast's play button to space and back without damaging it? Well, yes I did! This belongs to PewDiePie's! The play button's completely fine! It's totally undamaged! Yeah! <laughs> we sent Mr. Beast's 100 million play button into space! Oh my god, imagine if I dropped it then. This video, of course, would not have been possible without the hardworking people it sent into space. They are very close to 100,000 subscribers, so go subscribe to them. When they get there, they are obviously going to send their silver play button into space. Also, a huge thank you to Becky for editing this whole video, for helping to film loads of it, and just being there throughout the whole journey. And finally, thanks to this fella, Mr. Beast. He did not need to reach out to me. He doesn't need my promotion. So the fact he gave me an opportunity like this is just unbelievable. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Mwah! <laughs>